Take a look at this graph. It tells a fascinating story of the world's superpowers and how they're producing electricity and energy like never before. Back here in 1985, the United States is leading. Fast forward to 2000, just a few years later, and there's an interesting trend that is starting to appear. But nobody could predict what would happen next. China's electricity production didn't just explode, it smashed every record we previously thought possible in terms of what the core technology itself could achieve. And today, China has more than doubled construction of new wind and solar plants. Uh, the scale, the cost, efficiency to, to be really deployed in a viable way. China's producing more electricity than the United States, India, and the European Union combined. But how did this happen and what kind of technologies are helping us push this boundary even further than before? My name is Yoda, I'm a science and technology journalist and I cover the companies that are building the type of futuristic sci-fi technology that we will be having in our hands tomorrow. If you want to learn more about the future of science and technology, follow along. China has been investing over a hundred billion dollars each and every year, not only for making renewable energy resources better and faster and cheaper, but also of the accessory technologies that help make these more efficient. One of my favorite examples of this is these solar powered, solar power cleaning robots that are going around making solar farms more efficient. The results are absolutely mind blowing. Take a look at this. Between 2010 and 2023, the solar power photovoltaic costs have fallen by 90%. Offshore wind, onshore wind, and most importantly, the battery storage technology has also taken a dramatic cut in cost. Unlike electricity that's produced from fossil fuels, which fluctuates dramatically in costs, renewable energy production only gets cheaper and cheaper with time. The International Renewable Energy Agency recently published a report that showed that all of this has had a dramatic impact on to how much cheaper renewable electricity is becoming compared to fossil fuels. Solar power, for example, it's currently 56% cheaper. But to truly understand how China has dominated LNG production, you must understand this little annoying number first. You see, megawatt hours of electricity is a term that we're using in order to measure energy production. One megawatt hour of electricity is enough to power an EV vehicle for 3,600 miles, or approximately the power required by 600 homes to run for one hour. And China is currently producing more than 10,000 terawatt hours of electricity. Let me put this into perspective for a moment. China is currently building one wind power turbine every single hour, every hour of the year. In 2015 alone, China built so many solar panel farms that they could cover 10,000 football pitches. And just between January and May of this year, China has produced enough solar and wind power to power the entire country of Indonesia for an entire year. That is a country of 280 billion people approximately. But this would not be possible without mega projects and the incredible manufacturing power that is needed in order to support them. Take a look at this offshore wind and solar farm in Bingzhou, or the massive great solar wall that China is building in the middle of the Kumbuki Desert, right here. It stretches for 400 kilometers. But you might have heard of an interesting irony about renewable energy. Although it is better than fossil fuels in terms of energy production, but it takes a lot of energy, minerals, and other components in order to be built in itself. And that's what I want to show you in next week's video, where we're going to be talking about rare earths and some of the crazy things required for these incredible machines to be built. But this story is not just about renewable energy, it's about the total energy production. And for that, sadly, still 58% of China's electricity is produced by coal. However, one of the most important things to remember is that all future technologies depend on energy production. And the quiet, literal powerhouse of all these other industries. Take a look at these graphs. China has been dominating in steel production, they have built one of the most extensive high-speed rail networks in the world in just 12 years, going from this to this. They lead in rare earth production not because they have the largest deposits, as is commonly misunderstood, but because they have the capacity to refine these metals. Grass and car exports, robotics and drones follow a very similar trend, and it's a great reminder of how speed, scale and determination from a single country of 1.4 billion people can reshape our world in just a few decades. 
I don't know how these graphs are going to continue from here on, but I really hope that the climate technologies that are currently in the pipeline are only to increase this renewable proportion. And if you want to learn more about them, make sure to give me a follow. The links are in the description below. And thank you so much for listening.